Hi there! Welcome to Tourism Matters, a program that explores issues about tourism and why tourism is an important part of our lives. This is brought to you by UPAIT and TVUP. Tourism Matters tackle broad topics and are divided into three series. Number one, tourism policy and governance with a specific focus on issue on over-tourism. Number two, tourism education and human resource capacity. And number three, tourism industry, market, and enterprise. We hope you find the series interesting, educational, and fun. In this series, leading experts in tourism share their thoughts on over-tourism, a term that first appeared on social media in 2012 to denote the negative impacts of tourism and the social movements associated with host antagonism to too many guests. In Episode 2, Professor Real Cruz and Professor Giovanni Ligaspi of UPAIT explore the phenomenon of over-tourism in Boracay Island, with location shooting to document firsthand the impacts of the closure of the island, interviews with residents, business owners, Local executives and tourists explain different perspectives on over-tourism and how these affect the lives of local communities. In February 2018, Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte described Boracay as a cesspool and soon after declared the country's premier beach destination under state of calamity. The excessive numbers of tourists and visitors in Boracay led to a host of health and environmental problems. These, in fact, were cited by the government as a paramount concern for the immediate closure of the island. The island was closed to tourists from 26 April to 25 October 2018 in an effort to rectify problems accrued over decades of unbridled tourism growth and rampant violations of environmental and physical development of the island resort. This is true, and in fact, this bold step drew mixed reactions from the local residents, workers, entrepreneurs, and other stakeholders that incited lively debates about the implications for the tourism industry, both at the local and national levels. So what are the reasons and effects of over-tourism in Boracay? What were the immediate antecedents that led to the island's temporary closure? This episode will also discuss the efforts exerted by the government together with the private sector during the closure, along with the planned interventions to prevent previous problems from reappearing. Boracay is an island off the northwestern tip of Aklan province in the municipality of Malay in the Philippines. The island is located 315 kilometers south of Manila with an area of 10.32 square kilometers. Three of Malay's 17 districts are situated in Boracay Island, Balabag, Manok Manok, and Japa. The island is best known for its pristine white sand beach. And with this, over the years, government and the private sectors have featured Boracay heavily in tourism promotion campaigns, which led to the influx of local and foreign tourists. As a result, Tourism became established in Boracay, and the number of tourists and visitors increased by nearly 25 times from 1995 to 2017, rising from just about 81,197 visitors in 1995 to 2,001,974 in 2017. With Boracay's popularity to many beachgoers, this island was named Travel Plus Leisure Magazine's Best Island in 2012 and was ranked the top island in the world in 2016 Condenas Travel Reader's Choice Award. As a result, tourism has drawn both investors and people seeking employment in the island. In 2017, Boracay generated 17,727 direct tourism jobs are about 66% of employment in the Western Visayas region. In 2018, the National Disaster Risk Reduction Management Council estimated about 17,328 local and foreign workers and 19,289 unregistered workers 
in Boracay. These all contributed to the tourism revenue in 2017, posting 56 billion pesos, or more than a billion U.S. dollars. That's true. And over the years, as tourism boomed in Boracay, over-tourism became imminent. This has been evident from the sheer number of tourists and the densely packed structures along the four-kilometer stretch of White Beach. According to the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, the island can only accommodate 6,405 tourists per day. However, daily arrivals during peak months would be at about 7,774 persons daily. The adverse effect of over-tourism in the island led to a host of health and environmental problems. These eventually led to the closure of the island as threat to the community, tourists, businesses, and the economy became uncontrollable. The island water is contaminated with coliform bacteria. These bacteria, found in human feces, can cause various diseases including amoebiasis, typhoid fever, hepatitis A, gastroenteritis, and ear infection. And according to DNR, of the 2,600 establishments in Boracay, 32 percent, or about 834, were discharging wastewater directly to the sea, of which only 4 percent, or about 118, had wastewater discharge permits. Several underground pipes were illegally discharging wastewater into the water and caused contamination of groundwater source in the island. Further, bacteria levels in the waters of Balabag Beach reached 47,460 per 100 milliliters, which was 47 times the standard for recreational water safety. Over-tourism not only polluted the seawater and groundwater in the island, but also damaged the flora and fauna. Wetlands were even altered due to over-tourism. Wetlands provided protection to the island shores from wave action and preventing flooding. Construction around wetlands led to pollution of the wetlands, preventing water from flowing in and out of the island. Of the nine original wetlands on the island, five has disappeared. The remaining four wetlands are occupied by business establishments and illegal settlers. So in retrospect, since 1997, Boracay had already exceeded three of the six indicators of physical carrying capacity. Groundwater quality, groundwater quantity, marine water quality, land, sewage, and solid waste. Moving forward, after more than two decades, the government and other stakeholders have put their acts together to resolve issues brought about by overdevelopment and over-tourism in the island. Let us find out what our stakeholders think in this episode on over-tourism in Boracay. Uh, while grew, growing up, we really saw the changes over time. So from, from, from what it started lang as parang ano lang siya eh, a haven for um, those na parang mahilig sa high adventure like scuba diving. Those were the first na mga guest talaga who really stays here eh. Tapos over time, dumadami na nang dumadami yung mga tao. Now everybody can afford to come and it's very accessible. So there's the boom. The, the buildings, the modernization came siguro mga ano na, nasa 2003-2004. That's where it really started. Uh -oh. Mga seven, eight years ago, we already had Russian markets. Tapos four years ago, Asian markets na. Kasi for them, parang hindi na daw nila ma-feel yung paradise because of the overpopulation. Uh, you call that over-tourism. But as a local, na yung coming from the heart of a local, parang we don't want to see Boracay na ganito kadome. The food chains came in, like ano, um, all of those mga ano, fast food. So, ang bad side niya is yung basura, dumami. The solid waste, dumami. And then eventually, yung waste, hindi na pa proper dispose. Yes, the waste management was out of control. And then, 
the agal bloom is one of the reasons, di ba, kung bakit kami pinaklose. Parang ang, ang kapal ng agal bloom, and at night time, if you walk, may, may distinct na siya na smell from the normal. Tapos sabi, sabi namin, this is salt water, pero bakit may mosquito? Of course, not until that we have been closed down and we saw those illegal pipes that are being connected and being throughout, not just at the back beach, pero dito sa harap, some of them are from the, from the toilet talaga. Not just the kitchen waste, but really from the ano. Tapos, they found out na yung, yung drainage system that is supposed to be for the rainwater and for the flood water, doon din sila nag-connect. It has been corrected. Um, uh, it has been the pipes are being moved um, one kilometer away from the shoreline. But before they can dispose, like this, we have these two um, ano eh, service provider, and then before they can dispose, parang they have to have a result muna na class SB water. It's a swimming pool type na water, not very safe before nila ipalabas. Oo. Before nila i-discharge. And then, of course, after the closure, parang we are more conscious, we are more aware because of the warnings and the... Siguro yung constant na rin na um, guidance from the interagency and then constant na reminder for the stakeholders that now parang we should be... We, we should take care more of the island supposed to be or or it should be that you are booked in a compliant um, accommodation because uh, a compliant accommodation knows na, na we follow this and we have to maintain this there are ano may mga signage diyan sa labas oh oh and then sila mismo before they come in they ask what are the do's and don'ts so parang we are happy about it na somehow sila, aware din sila. We are now at Bolabog Beach, the area declared as a cesspool by President Rodrigo Duterte. Despite the construction of the Boracay drainage system by Tiesa, this destination has been a popular site for wind and kite surfing enthusiasts. This area is also known as a dumping site for wastewater in the island of Boracay. Now, the project of TESA is to rehabilitate the waters of Bolabog Beach and move the pipes one kilometer away from the shore. We are now in the location of wetland number two in Barangay Balabag in the island of Boracay. Now, it has become a Boracay Wetland Conservation Park under the Lopez Group of Companies. This is composed of the remaining endemic flora and fauna in the island of Boracay. This Boracay Wetland Conservation Park includes bird watch platform for people to appreciate and advocate biodiversity. We are now here at Mount Luho View Deck, one of the best areas where you can see the island of Boracay. From here, you can see Barangay Manok Manok, Yapak, and Balabag. This area has been closed for tourists and locals. It has been found to violate a lot of regulations, one of which would be for the protection and conservation of forest land. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources spearheaded the closure of this particular area. Uh, nung bago kasi isinara ito, may, uh, let's accept the fact na mayroon talagang problema. May environmental uh, problem yung island manage properly yung uh, uh, drainage, yung uh, sewerage natin, yung iba may mga illegal connection. Uh, kaya yun ang naging problema talaga sa island. Nagkaroon ng black city doon sa implementation. Uh, kaya na-declare nung presidente natin na si Spool dahil na nakita yung pollution ng mga sa dagat. But uh, during the closure at nagsimula yung rehabilitation, doon na-correct na po yung mga problema at uh, yung infrastructure na uh, ginawa ng national nagkaroon po ng budget yung uh, DPWH para totally tanggalin yung dating drainage system pinunitan ng bago at mas, mas malaki siya uh, nagkaroon ng uh, 
widening of the road at uh, uh, pinakumply po lahat yung establishment doon sa mga uh, batas natin sa environmental uh, protection lalong lalo na yung uh, mga STP natin, yung mga sewerage connection uh, talagang hinigpitan at uh, lahat yung mga violator na yun at tanggal lahat yung mga illegal connection at yung iba nagbayad talaga po ng uh, penalty Uh, maraming kategory kasi may mga malaking resort talaga na although nakakonek sila sa, sa sewerage system pero may mga ibang naging illegal ang connection uh, so mayroong mga maliliit na establishment din na uh, ang ginawa uh, septic tank na lang na dapat may may ano ka may STP either nakakonek ka sa sewerage or may STP kang sarili uh, ngayon pagka walang clearance galing sa AMB uh, sa part ng LGO hindi ko na tinatanggap yung mga renewal sa yung mga bago application naging naipit po tayo doon pagka closure and after ng closure andyan pa rin po yung interagency uh, andyan pa rin yung trabaho nila at uh, yun nga bago yung opening nagpalabas tayo ng mga policy at uh, karamihan naman doon may mga existing uh, local ordinance na so it's a matter of uh, implementation, implementation na lang po Uh, so, in time ng opening, andyan ako. So, talagang medyo mabigat pero sinimulan namin na i-implement na lahat yung, uh, yung policy ng uh, national sa yung uh, local ordinance. Yung mga violators na nangyayari, itong mga kapatid nating mga maliliit, yung mga vendors, yung mga soul, yung mga commissioners, yung mga ganun lang. At uh, ginagawa din ng paraan para magkaroon sila ng lugar din nila para hindi magkalat sa within 25 plus 5. Uh, actually, ang, ang objective natin dito is ma-implement lahat yung mga national laws sa yung local uh, ordinances natin. At uh, ang goal natin dyan na uh, magiging uh, discipline zone yung Buwakay. Uh, lahat aware na mayroon tayong patas na ganito na dapat uh, ito pa rin. At yun ay mahigpit na ipinatutupad. As the Chief Tourism Operations Officer of Malay, uh, happy na rin po tayo, lalong-lalo na sa resulta ng ating uh, rehabilitation. Kasi during the closure, doon po natin, kumbaga, with the proper assessment, na kailangan din talaga na dapat i-rehabilitate rin natin yung tao. Not only for the infra, infra matter, And for, of course, the um, natural healing of our environment, especially with our uh, beach. No? If ever kung nalilipil up na rin siya sa infra, sa environmental matter, dapat malibil up rin yung service, quality service ng ating mga tourism frontliners. Mm -hmm. So with the cooperation with the Department of Tourism, we have our series of seminars, skills enhancement seminars ng mga tourism frontliners natin. From the tricycle driver, boatman, mashores, vendors, lahat-lahat po yun siya. So, alam, alam naman natin na meron naman talaga tayong mga pagkukulang before closure na dapat itama natin. So, kasi noon, nandyan si Sandcastle, nandyan si Fire Dancers, nandyan yung mga vendors natin. So, at least, yun yung mga pagbabago na dapat talagang we have to preserve the the shoreline area, the coastline area, no? If you're going to look at into the uh, economic side, especially sa mga locals na tinapiktado, so parang nahihirapan din. At at least ang importante doon, kumbaga, uh, tatas yung economic natin, preserving environment natin, uh, kumbaga, and, and yung mga tao natin is progreso. Mm -hmm. Ang ano, ang objective ng national natin na uh, it's a longer plan and for the sustainability. So, okay naman po tayo doon. Oh, okay. Well, we went through our pre-opening phase early December 2017. And then, of course, the closure came April 2018. There was a good uh, experience in the four months of uh, the late 2017, early 2018, until the closure, and it was brilliant. It was really good. I mean, in terms of uh, occupancy, income, uh, flow of guests, uh, it, it was brilliant. The reopening of the island uh, by October 26, it was very slow. The occupancy percentage picked up only end of December, beginning of January, to be honest with you, and that is not to our potential, the, the, 
the percentage that we are looking for, now we can say that really we are back on track. Certainly the biggest lesson from the closure is uh, to, uh, for all establishments and all hotels and even the local government uh, to have a sustained development plan uh, in hand and it should be communicated and should be respected. Uh, I think it was a harsh decision but it was a good decision by the president to be honest with you. Many people maybe were against it but I was one of the people who say yes. Of course, it was a big challenge, uh, particularly the staff, uh, who were kind of effective because we kept all our staff on the payroll as, as they are for the whole duration of six months. Uh, but of course, we lost a portion of the training which we conducted during the first pre-opening. We have some updates from the local government about the sewer line, about the water treatment plants, etc. I am not sure if it was already concluded. Nonetheless, the situation is much better than before. Actually, we were a little bit worried that, you know, the pickup might take a bit longer, but thank God, it, 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 it really picked up. Even before the closure, we were one of those hotels who uh, implemented certain uh, areas for sustainable um, uh, environment for the entire island uh, as we say it's a group effort it's between us as uh, as individual <coughs> stakeholders and uh, the, the government the personal um, uh, lesson is that to comply with whatever local government regional government or the national requirement in terms of building uh, code in terms of uh, uh, STP standards, uh, etc. But the closure brought the people together. We started to talk together more, we started to meet each other more, um, because the, 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 the goal was the same. And anything happened, it will affect everybody. So everybody was standing together. Before the closure, um, things were actually great. We were really receiving a lot of good feedback, good, good traffic, especially it was our, you know, peak season. And then when we heard about the news of uh, the closure, of course, kami, we couldn't believe it. Our first problem was how, paano yung stocks namin? And also, one of the biggest ones were the employees, because some of our employees have been with us for, since the beginning of the business. What we did sa mga employees namin was we, you know, we still supported them. So yun nga, what happened was when let's nag-close na talaga siya, the first was panic of course. After the first month, um, what happened was, ayun nga, no, no revenue passing by, it was just the locals here. You know, it became stagnant everything, so we had to stock everything up here in Happy Planet, things became slow. But nung nag-open siya, sobrang lakas. So, we weren't expecting that much influx from people. Sobrang dami ng tao. Yung tao namin, hindi masupply yung, ano, yung kailangan ng mga customers namin. So, we were understaffed. That was one of the biggest challenges we had to face. We're slowly, you know, getting back on our feet. And as of now, we're doing great, actually. So, and that's all I could say with, uh, with what has been happening. We are currently running these operations for the past four years. What did we all experience during the closure with me and my staff? Uh, it was very sudden. It was like a, a thief in the night. But us locals and islanders, we've been waiting for it all along. We've been wanting it actually. And Tatay Digong gave it to us. And in, in fact, to tell you the truth, it's a blessing in disguise. Because number one, Ever since, like, the islanders, like me, and like most of the people around here, they realized na, sabi nila, ano ba yan? Ang dumi sa Bulabog, ang dumi sa beach. Look at the guests. Walang pakialam. Yung turista, walang pakialam. Eh ngayon, maglakad ka ngayon sa Boracay. Makikita mo yung, yung tindig ng tao pag nag si yung naandun yung sense of urgency nila. And pagmamahal sa is Malasakit. Yun nga, ikaw nga. Malasakit. That's what the closure has taught us. Well, for my staff, 
what I did personally, because we treat them like family, we subsidized them during the closure. Actually, it's positive. Because, number one, nabawasan yung kalat sa beach, nabawasan yung excess activities, but 80% of our staff, all of our savings went to the staff because they are our investment. They are people. We have to take care of them. Even though na maasa sila ng subsidy sa government, sabi ko, go, sige, pila lang kayo ng pila. Pero kami, we, huwag kayo mag-alala. Sweldoan ka namin kayo. And their loyalty and their respect is there. So during the closure, we were all here during the hearing. Me and my father, especially my father, Boy at Sakdalan. We were here in the island cooperating with the DNR and the task force. I also proposed to the local government to have a short video upon entry. Upon entry on the bankas. Like a one or two minute video saying na this is the do's and don'ts. Educate them. There's no problem. Well, the best lesson for the six months, well, Boracay is the spearhead of tourism in the Philippines. That's my opinion, okay? Uh, Boracay is an example. And what happened to Boracay, it shouldn't happen to the rest. It should be an example to everyone and to our, like us, stakeholders to be responsible. It starts with us. It, does, it starts with the citizens, the islanders, yes. More than 10 years na po akong nagtutor guide and um, ako po ay isang Department of Tourism accredited tour guide based here in Boracay. And um, during closure, at first, napakalaking adjustment yung ginawa ko personally. Because nung una, um, well, wala kami source of income. Gawa na siyempre, wala namang guest. No? And... Um, Uh, so, ang ginawa namin that time is um, gawa kami ng mga alternative na ways para kayo magkakaroon ng source of income. Like, um, nung una, kasi may maliit kami yung space sa likod or gawa kami mga backyard, ginawa namin backyard garden yung likod bahay namin. And uh, nagtanong kami doon ng mga, first, usual, mga gulay or vegetables like angkong, sitaw and the lights. Ang good thing about the closure naman is uh, the DOT reduce is very, very supportive naman to all stakeholders just like uh, particularly sa mga tour guides kasi nga nagkandak sila ng mga series of seminars just to enhance or polish our skills uh, specifically yung of course, no, customer service seminars, anti-terrorism workshops and the lights. So I'm very thankful for that no? in a way Um, naging positive talaga yung aming mindset that time. Uh, at this time, back to normal na rin tayo, back, back to business as usual na kasi nag-open na rin yung Boracay last October 26. And uh, marami talagang changes na nangyari. Not just yung safer swimming na yung beach, malinis na siya. Mas dumami na yung mga, ano, actually, yung mga guests namin. No? Not just local but mostly foreign tourists. No? Personally, mas namami yung aming clients, mas namapad yung aming networks kasi mas maraming um, nag-ano sa amin, nag indoors So yung iba, parang nadepress sila uh, because of the closure kasi nga wala talagang source of uh, income or um, wala silang financially, hindi stable yung ano nila. Hindi, hindi sila pinasustable. But yun na nga, kailangan maging resilient lang talaga dun. During the closure, nagkaroon kami ng enough time lahat. So we were able to train and to, to attend to all the trainings that was provided by the Department of Tourism. So parang walang nasayang na panahon. Nag, nagsiset kami ng meetings para magkaroon kami ng mga programs like yung clean up, Nung during the closure, nagkaroon po ng standard talaga. Lahat, kailangan may permit. Lahat, compliant. Na kung ikaw ay compliant, ang tawag dito, yung, yung services mo na maibibigay sa bisita is yung dapat, yung standard talaga. We are thankful for the closure. And, pero syempre, hindi mo rin maiwawaglit sa isip mo na yung closure meron talagang effect 
financially, sa trabaho. Pero kung when, when you think about it as a whole, talagang for the good siya, for the better, actually for the best ng Boracay. Lesson learned is that um, masasabi ko talaga na if you're a compliant company, organization, um, lahat ng pwedeng maibigay ng gobyerno when it comes to all the support, ikaw talaga ang unang makakasalo nun. Of course, uh, na walang kami ng business for six months. Uh, but the advantage beyond that uh, sa nangyari, uh, uh, we had a chance to retrain our people uh, in coordination with DOT and some of the government agencies. Uh, provide sila ng mga seminars for, ano, for enhancement ng mga frontliners namin. And on our part, it's also a chance for us to to uh, main, uh, do maintenance work on our equipment. At saka isa naman, uh, the government uh, uh, assisted us sa mga, sa mga pangangailangan ng mga tao namin. Yung iba, nagbigay silang cash for work projects and DSWD. Sa ngayon po, maganda po kasi ang nangyari kasi makita nyo ngayon, napakaganda ng Buracay. Hindi ka gano'n na very, very crowded. Lalo sa gabi, pag makita nyo, talagang crowded. Pero ngayon makita nyo, napakalinis na ng beach. Walang, masyad, walang naninigarilyo, walang mga masyadong violators. Kasi po, ini-enforce namin talaga very extensively ang mga uh, ordinances. Uh, meron po kami project ngayon na gawin discipline zone ang front beach. Ang sinasabi nga ng, 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 ng inter Burake Inter-Agency Task Force, no compliance, no operation. Uh, ganun din ang sabi ng DOT sa mga PTE, mga primary tourist uh, establishments, no accreditation, no operation. So, yun po ang ini-enforce namin. Okay, ito pong project best kasi. Uh, Pinag-isa po namin ang mga uh, PNP. Tapos kami, tapos ang malayo auxiliar police, <coughs> tsaka po ang beach guards. Composite po yan. Uh, dinibide po namin ang front beach in four sectors. Each sector, meron pong uh, dalawang PNP, dalawang beach guard, dalawang trio, tsaka dalawang map. Posted po yan sa mga lugar kung saan ang maraming congregation ng mga bisita. Yung in-apply namin mga uh, steps during the closure is uh, uh, dati kasi medyo hindi namin na uh, linilinis yung mga under uh, ano namin kung saan kami nag-activities. So what we did is we clean all uh, almost all the ano yung sa underwater ano namin. Uh, we're asking also from DNR yung posters na ilalagay namin sa mga uh, balsa namin. So everybody will be aware yung mga tao namin at saka yung mga guest namin so they will not throw plastic sa ano sa mga o oh, magdudumi sila tapos we put uh, segregated uh, trash cans in our ano uh, yung mga balsa namin as of now yung benefits naman na uh, unti-unti mo namin nakikita mas luminis ngayon yung ano uh, at yung mga tao karamihan nagsasabi nga ang linis daw ng Boracay ngayon kaysa dati <laughs> Sabi nila, tsaka nakita nila medyo disiplinado yung mga tao, wala nang patapon-tapon ng ano dyan, sigarilyo, ano. Uh, mga lessons learned namin doon, marami. <laughs> Actually, it's more on medyo nung una kasi hindi kami aware dyan sa mga environmental issues. So, uh, medyo hindi rin namin pinapansin masyado, pero ang mga kwan namin ngayon, uh, we're trying to educate all our workers, especially our workers na to respect the environment. Uh, right now, uh, uh, in cooperation with the other associations, uh, pag meron silang underwater cleanup, nag-coordinate uh, kami to help them uh, with our providing the boats for them. People are really curious about Boracay right now. A lot of people want to go to Boracay. What happened to Boracay, sabi nila. Lessons learned. Igalang po natin ang kalikasan number one, at saka uh, sana po ngayon yung mga pasaway ay sumunod na po sa batas. 
sa bagong Boracay, medyo matuto na tayo. Matuto na ang mga turista at saka hindi lang mga local, pati na mga turista na we have to love the island. Sa pag, tungkol po sa pagsara ng Boracay, one month, two months po, hindi pa po namin nararamdaman yung baga sa epekto po o magtutumas na po. Yun na, ramdam na po namin talagang wala lang katao-tao yung Boracay. Kami-kami lang po dito. Tapos po naranasan po namin na nang isda po talaga kami sa o wala po kami mas, ano sa halos po yung dumadaan na lang po na mga residente taga rito sa beach na lang po o tapos kasi yung kalsada po talaga bungkal po lahat talaga pero maganda naman po yung nangyayari kasi po na kung hindi po na ano ni President Duterte yung Boracay talagang masisira po kung hindi po niya naagapan na ganunin po kasi may maraming mga Uh, tubo yung mga pipe na inano sa ilalim. Tapos ngayon nakita, o oh, siyempre yung mga naipon namin sa halagang six, sa six months, wala po, nakapag-utang pa po sa mga para kumbaga sa ano, pa ngayon, papunta pa lang kami sa sa, sa parang nagsisimula, palit pa sa umpisa po. Hindi pa po yung mga iba namin, ano, hindi pa po namin nababayaran sa ngayon po. Yun, may ano naman silang inano na cast for work na trabaho dito sa isla ng Boracay. Hindi ka namin sukat akala na akala namin hangaka lang na ganito mag-close joke, joke lang yung para totoo. Kung baga sa hindi nakapag-prepared sa mga residente, sa mga tao po dito sa Boracay, uh, yung payo ko lang, sana po wag abusuhin yung uh, ng Boracay. We have seen that views can differ and be quite strong for and against tourism particularly as lives can be directly and indirectly affected by decisions taken. One thing clear is that managing over-tourism required the collaboration of key stakeholders, the observance of good governance, and learning from our collective experience. Through this, attaining a more sustainable future will be less difficult to achieve. It can be concluded that over-tourism in the island of Boracay was a result of unchecked market forces along with government incapacity to implement appropriate actions to counter-check exploitation of legal loopholes by tourism establishments in Boracay. Further, a paradigm based on volume rather than quality of tourists and visitors had framed the island's development and pushed the island towards over-tourism. The closure proved that the government could impose its will for the common good in order to promote a more inclusive, sustainable, and responsible tourism for all. Moving forward, Boracay could remain a haven for the right kind of tourism, one that focuses on quality visitors rather than the volume for mass tourism. Development measures must focus not on expanding the capacity for tourism, but rather than on remaining within the island's ecological and social capacities. This should be reflected in the use of sustainable development indicators instead of econometric measures of arrivals and tourism receipts. Tourism is what we make it. Will the destination use tourism or be used by it? Let's all take responsibility in making tourism sustainable for all. The challenge is to make tourism destinations beneficial to all. Let's face the challenge and bring change to promote tourism and not over-tourism.